fighting corruption charges that claim he sold Crown lands improperly in exchange for bribes. I have done absolutely nothing wrong, absolutely nothing corrupt. Turks and Caicos is a success story. A shady politician? Or is the former leader of the Turks and Caicos being targeted as he campaigns for independence from the British? Let the Turks and Caicos people decide whether we want to remain British or we want to go independent. A rare TV interview with Michael Misick about his upcoming trial and his fight to clear his name. And later... The allegations of rape that you put yourself in a position to be able to have a woman scream rape, mm -hmm. that is absolutely unacceptable. There was no charge, frivolous allegation. Michael Misick opens up about his failed marriage to Hollywood actress Lisa Ray McCoy. All this and more on this episode of 18 Degrees North. Degrees North is brought to you by Rainforest Seafoods, fresh from the ocean. Variety is the spice of life, and Rainforest Seafoods brings you the widest and best choices of fish and seafood. Flash frozen to seal in all the natural goodness until ready to cook. It's really fresher than fresh. That's a fish fact from Rainforest Seafoods, fresh from the ocean. Hello, I'm Zara Burton and welcome to 18 Degrees North. It's from right here in Kingston, Jamaica, 18 degrees north of the equator, that every week we're going to take you on a global journey with us as we focus on Caribbean stories that have global impact. We begin our show in the Turks and Caicos Islands, one of six territories owned by the British in the Caribbean. There, a popular former premier, Michael Misick, is leading a movement to gain independence. But his effort, while touted as a benefit to the island's 30,000 plus people, is also personal. Misick and members of his former cabinet have been battling corruption charges leveled by the British for improperly selling off Crown land in exchange for bribes. So was this just bad politics or was it criminal? We traveled to the Turks and Caicos Islands where we spoke exclusively with Michael Misick at 22 degrees north and 72 degrees west. The allegations stemmed from 2003 to 2008, a period of record growth in the Turks and Caicos. Billions of dollars in high-end hotel construction poured in. A-list celebrities like Donna Karen and Bruce Willis owned homes on the islands. Tourist arrivals soared as flights increased and Carnival Cruise Lines began docking at Grand Turk. The economy rose more than 70%. By 2007, the country's leader, Michael Misick, from the Progressive National Party, easily won re-election. Misick earned big for his nation, but also lived and spent big. He married Hollywood actress Lisa Ray McCoy, known for roles in the TV sitcom All of Us and movies like The Players Club. All money ain't good money, so how you make yours? both living in this mansion and flying around the world in a private jet, all while his salary and allowances as premier were less than $300,000 each year. They're, they're looking for big and better things all the time. Then amid year after year of government overspending and an impending world financial crisis, accusations that Misick was enriching himself at the expense of his country. Britain would eventually take power temporarily, suspend the local constitution and order a commission of inquiry that resulted in Misick and others being charged with corruption. Why is it that you're on this push to get the British out of your hair? It's not a question of getting the British government out of our, out of our hair. It's probably more like uh, it's our right to govern ourselves. I believe that our future is, is tied with CARICOM and the United States as our 
uh, our neighbors. The U.S. dollar is our official currency. Um, we, we get no direct aid or budgetary support from the United Kingdom. What is the traction that you're gaining with well, Free Turks and Caicos? Uh, this Free Turks and Caicos movement is something that is relatively new. And I believe over the next um, months and, and years leading up to 2016, which is the next election, um, there will be traction. Okay. There will be traction, there will be agitation, there will be pressure to, to say, let us have a, a choice on the matter. Mm -hmm. Let the Turks and Caicos people decide whether we want to remain British or we want to uh, go independent. The British helped you, though, during the financial crisis. They had to bail you out. They came in and gave you loan guarantees, $260 million U.S. dollars worth of loan guarantees. That meant you could also go out and borrow at reduced interest rates. So the British have helped well, the Turks and that, Caicos economy. Well, that's, that's, that's their side of the story. That's the spin they put on it. They killed the Turks and Caicos economy by interfering in the democratic process. After the intervention, most of the construction a stop. Uh, most of, and, and, and construction and investment is what drive our economies along, along with, 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 with tourism. In 2003, you mentioned a moment ago when you came in, the budget was around 100 million. Mm -hmm. You were able to more than double that by mm -hmm. the time you left in 2009. But you didn't leave under good circumstances. You were assessed by the British that there were a lot of shenanigans going on in your government, that there was a lot of monies being passed over to you and to your party and it was an exchange for lands that you were essentially selling off to investors at bottom dollar prices. I can categorically say that uh, I, have, I have done absolutely nothing wrong, absolutely nothing corrupt. Uh, what we have done is the complete opposite. Trucks and Caicos is a success story. And yet, and and so, yet you do have but, 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 several cases that have been settled that would imply, insinuate, or prove that you and your party received monies. No, there have been several no, but, developers, well, well, including even Sandals Resorts, that but, have settled cases. Well, uh, that, that's, that's, up, that's up to them. How, but, uh, and, I, and I don't have any sight of, of the settlement that they made, or made, but it is my understanding that none of them admit any guilt. Nobody is arguing that you didn't help this economy grow. I think it's how you were able to get it done. You ask, how, how, how was I able to develop this place like it is in the last 10 years? By giving concession. The same thing that they do in the Bahamas. Did you give Mr. Stewart concessions? Of course. What he, kind he, of he's concessions? A, he's a major developer. Concessions in, rela in, in relation to uh, when, you, when, you, when you do construction, you import material. Most of our revenue comes from custom duties. So uh, he was given a concession um, to pay a lesser duty. But not, only, but not only he was given it. All of the developers. Various news reports have said $1.6 million came from the Sandals Group into either a combination of your coffers or your party's coffers. Uh, well, what's the difference between giving a political contribution to a party here and giving a political contribution so to a party in Jamaica. It? Why didn't you disclose it? Disclose what? The political contributions. No, I'm not the party. Uh, the same thing with, with, with the parties in, in the UK, uh, where donors give contribution to political parties in the UK or the parties in the United States. That, that is not illegal. The Constitution requires that elected officials declare financial interests you didn't, and in, res in, a, in response to questions from investigators, in a written response, you said there has been a cross-party culture not to. How, how is that not a problem? I don't understand. There was a register of interest, and I've always registered my interests. Uh -huh. uh, and so. No, but you uh, said there's a party no, but, culture not but, to. But, but cross-party culture. Again, um, and I humbly ask you to respect that. Uh -huh. That I cannot go into to, to matters in relation to my uh, criminal charges or, or information arising out of that that can possibly be used against you uh, be used whether it's against me or for me your wealth it went from in 2003 <laughs> reported at 50,000 and last report I saw was that it had gone up to in the Hades 180 million dollars wow it's a lot that's of money huge. Right? Wow. <laughs> And you, That's do, really do, huge. Do you believe everything you read? I guess I have to show ask me, you show, the question. Show me, show me the evidence. And well, you know, let, let us first. Let me say that you know, I've, I, I've, I've been. Uh, again, this is 
a mixture of opposition and, and British government propaganda. I've been in business here in Turks and Caicos since uh, the, the early uh, 80s and have worked hard and, and have earned uh, a good living way before politics mm -hmm. and will continue to earn uh, and invest in our country uh, even after politics. So I'm not distracted from the sideshow um, that wants to discredit me because of my belief that our country should be independent. What is your net worth? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I, that's not important. I'm, I, it's not important what my net worth is or, or, or not. But certainly it's not 180 million. How <laughs> much did you get in political donations? No, but again, political do, 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 donations goes to the party right. in most cases. And, and, right? and you were the leader. And, but, I, I, but, and, but I don't have record of that. Why See, were you going to Brazil? I, I went to Brazil uh, because um, after seeing the, the direction that the investigation was taken, changing the laws and the political persecution that, has been, that was taking place here, even with, with family members and, and other party supporters, I went to Brazil to seek political asylum. What was it like being arrested and imprisoned there? <laughs> terrible, terrible. The condition was bad. Uh, I was in a prison that was actually condemned by the United Nations. Oh no, really? Uh, yes. Funny enough, today uh, is, uh, makes one year exactly since I've been back home, since I've been, been uh, back home from Brazil. And wow. So, since my anniversary. Are you, you afraid know? of prison? I, 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 I have no fear. I fear God. I fear no man, I fear no, and, and of course, before going to prison, you're afraid of prison. But having gone to prison, <laughs> <laughs> you're no longer afraid of prison. You're not afraid of prison anymore. Uh, of course, you don't want, no one wants to go to prison. Right. But I'm not afraid. Coming up on 18 Degrees North, Michael Misick gets personal. Have I cheated on my wife? Is that what you're yeah. asking me? his marriage to Hollywood actress Lisa Ray McCoy. You put yourself in a position to be able to have a woman scream rape? Mm -hmm. That is absolutely unacceptable. Allegations of rape, rumors of infidelity. Rumors about babies here and infidelity and stay and, you know, uh, lunches with people that I didn't know anything about. And his subsequent divorce. When we come back on 18 Degrees North. Travel for the preceding segment was brought to you by Inter-Caribbean Airways, with several flights weekly between Kingston, Jamaica and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Book your getaway now at www.intercaribbean.com. Be heart strong. You can reduce your chances of getting heart disease by eating more fish. In fact, seafood is likely the single most important food you can consume for good health. That's a fish fact from Rainforest Seafoods, fresh from the ocean. Get good value every day. When you eat fish twice a week, you get an excellent source of protein. Good for the whole family. Fish is quick, easy, affordable, and scales high on value. A fish fact from Rainforest Seafoods. Fresh from the ocean. Twenty fifteen may be a turning point for the British Overseas Territory, the Turks and Caicos Islands. Against the backdrop of some clamoring for independence, this nation's former premier and some of his cabinet members could learn their fate as they battle corruption charges leveled by the British. Since Missick's resignation, the British took over governing the islands temporarily, changed the constitution, and applied laws retroactively. And now, Michael Missick must face a judge instead of a jury of his peers. We spoke with Missick about his legal challenges in part two of our interview in the TCI at 22 degrees north and 72 degrees west. You will not be tried by jury. I think the reason for the lack of a jury trial, at least on paper, is that there is a great difficulty in getting a jury pool well, we that will not be biased. Quite frankly, that's an insult to the people of the Turks and Caicos Islands. What, 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 is, what, what that supposes, that you can't find seven, out of a country of 30,000 people, you can't find seven men, and, men or women who can be uh, impartial. It's an insult. There's no need for all of this charade. I thought I heard that your assets were seized. I think you had actually put in a request for them to be 
giving you allowances every single month. Mm -hmm. So is it out of those allowances that you're now paying for your attorney? My present position is that um, I'm, I'm unrepresented. Um, Mr. Courtney Griffiths, who was representing me, is no longer representing me. Uh, and uh, I am now on uh, legal aid. What does that mean? The government of the Turks and Caicos okay. will be paying the, uh, my legal fees. And so you have this major case going on and you're going to depend on legal aid? Yes, because I have no money to, 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 to uh, spend on my own legal defense. So what happened to uh, these assets that were seized? They seized. <laughs> When assets are seized, they're seized. The other case that you have pending, a rape case. That's not pending. Many, many years ago, the, the, there was an investigation by the FBI and the Turks and Caicos police uh, force, and there was no charge, and it was a frivolous allegation. It's a uh, dead matter. I was watching an interview, I think it was some years ago, uh, with your ex-wife, uh, Lisa Ray. The allegations of rape, that you put yourself in a position to be able to have a woman scream rape, mm -hmm. that is absolutely unacceptable. Maybe I should behave like your wife for a second and ask you, how could you have gotten involved in a situation where you were even accused? No, but as long as you're a man, sometimes even if you're in a trusting position, people make allegations for different reasons. It's just one of those things. Was it's there a relationship that was external to your marriage? But, <laughs> well, I mean, have I cheated on my wife? Is that what you're yeah. asking me? <laughs> um, I, I think I would be, you know, that's a matter that would be between my wife and I, but, you know, I, I uh, uh, yeah, that would, that would be a matter that would be between my wife and I, my ex-wife and I. We've been divorced for over five years, so it's not even relevant today. Did the allegations factor into your latest divorce? Of cheating. And um, yes. Uh, no. No? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Seems a little implausible. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Rumors about babies here and infidelity and stay and, you know, uh, lunches with people that I didn't know anything about. And I was like, okay. And then he started trying to, you know, date friends and friends of friends was introducing him to friends. And I was like, well, what's going on here? Do Caribbean men just have a problem? With what? Cheating. I mean, I guess there's a lot of variety in the country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't well, know. let me get you to weigh in on that. It's a beautiful thing to have a, a monogamous relationship, if you can find it. So you were monogamous? It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a beautiful thing. Were you involved in a beautiful thing then? <laughs> there's a saying, there's a uh, guy... So, you know, he liked weddings, uh -huh. but it's the marriage that sometimes is difficult to, to manage, you know? Yeah. But weddings are beautiful, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, in terms of your everyday life now, what is it like? Pretty much a beach bum. <laughs> but also uh, concentrating on, um, obviously, my, my legal defense, doing a lot of reading and writing. Um, uh, certainly, when all of this is said and done, uh, uh, I'm beginning to write my, my, uh, my memoirs. We have a, a real estate uh, development and sales company, so I'm in, involved some. Is that how you make well. most of your money right now, through development? That's how I made my living you know, from the very beginning. Okay. You know? yeah. right. Do you like the high life? Be honest. I'm a simple, simple man from a small island. Um, my greatest uh, happiness comes from spending time with my kids, fishing. I love the water, you know, fishing and diving conch and snorkeling. That's, 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 that's what I like. You know, um, you know I don't want to live in New York in a high rise. I don't want to live in High Park in London. I want to live right here in, in the Caribbean, in Turks and Caicos. Now 18 Degrees North speaks exclusively with Lisa Ray McCoy about her ex-husband, Michael Missick. You know what? My life has changed so drastically to my spiritual journey that I'm on now, opposed to what I was going through then, I had to remember the good times that Michael and I had together. I had to remember the things that we've done for the country and for the people there. I had to remember how great he was to me and how great of a person that he is even now. And when you go through such a public breakup, then of course you're mad and we should have handled it totally different and we should have kept more of our business to ourselves.
Did we do some things that we would want to change? Absolutely. But that is then and this is now. And so I remember how much he loved me. And for that, I stand strong on that. And I feel good about that. Do you still love him today? And do you think that you would ever get back together? Of course, yes. I will say I still love Michael because of the kind of person that he was to me. There's love there. I don't think that I will ever harden where I would say, no, I don't love him. Will we ever get back together? I have learned not to say never. We're able to be cordial. We're able to be able to talk to one another. We're able to express to one another what happened in our marriage. And, and that's, um, that's progress. Coming up on 18 Degrees North, dissecting the case of Michael Messick. Is the British overstepping in prosecuting the former TCI premier? Or are British overseas territories still not ready to govern themselves? What the UK have done though is they have rejigged the constitution of Turks and Caicos. It's an abomination of the justice system. When we come back on 18 Degrees North. Travel for the preceding segment was brought to you by Inter-Caribbean Airways, with several flights weekly between Kingston, Jamaica and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Book your getaway now at www.intercaribbean.com. Here is an amazing fish fact. The omega-3 fatty acids present in fish have great health benefits on the brain, eyes, nerves, muscles, and the heart. Eating fish and seafood contribute to a longer, healthier life. Rainforest seafoods, fresh from the ocean. Be heart strong. You can reduce your chances of getting heart disease by eating more fish. In fact, seafood is likely the single most important food you can consume for good health. That's a fish fact from Rainforest Seafoods, fresh from the ocean. We just brought you our interview with the former premier of the Turks and Caicos Islands, Michael Missick, who is charged with improperly selling off British crown lands in exchange for bribes. Seems egregious, maybe a fair enough charge, but is Britain overstepping its prosecution of Missick? Joining us to discuss is Walton Brown, a member of parliament in Bermuda, another British overseas territory. Brown was an expert advisor to the UN Committee for Decolonization, and he's with us via Skype. Welcome to the program, Mr. Brown. How are British overseas territories governed? Do they go by British law or do they have their own laws? Each of the overseas territories has their own constitution. And, but you should know that each constitution is merely an order in council in the UK Parliament. So the constitution can be amended at will by the UK Parliament. Since the TCI didn't have an anti-corruption law, does English law now become the law of the land? If there was no local law in place to assess what had taken place, then there was no crime committed. You can't hold someone responsible. You can't charge someone for, on a matter that's not a crime in that country. It's just as simple as that. What the UK have done, though, is they have rejigged the constitution of Turks and Caicos. They put certain laws in place, and my understanding is that they are applying those laws retroactively. It's an abomination of the justice system. Misik won't be tried by a jury, at least that's the latest ruling. He will be tried by a judge. Do you think that that is so egregious, given the fact that the TCI really does have a very small population, maybe 30,000 people or a little bit more than that, and maybe there is not the ability to have an unbiased jury? The idea of having a jury uh, of your peers means that of the 12 people or so who you have, you're going to get a mixture of viewpoint. And what this message is sending in terms of not having any jury, no trial by jury, is that we don't trust the people to make a fair and sensible judgment. If you allow this to stand, as it appears it's going to be, then you're sending the wrong message about any type of governance that can be seen to be um, based on the best interests of the people going forward. Should they bring him to the United Kingdom to face a jury there? I think that that sends the wrong message. Again, it's, it presupposes that there is a notion of superiority. And that's one of the most, ling one of the lingering and damaging aspects of colonization, that somehow a jury in the UK 
would be better and more effective in adjudicating a matter than a jury emanating from the Caribbean. I just reject it out of hand because the subtext is that what's British is inherently better. If he is convicted, where does he spend his prison time? In the United Kingdom or in the Turks and Caicos Islands? The logical outcome would be that anyone who is convicted of a crime in uh, a territory is sent to prison in that territory. Let's face it, things in the Caribbean maybe do not work as well as things in the United Kingdom when it comes to transparency. There's been a push here in Jamaica and across the region for maybe more transparency, but generally speaking, the Brits have more. What's wrong with the British saying, you're our territory, you're acting up, you're carrying on with shenanigans, I'm going to step in and take over temporarily. What's wrong with that? The issue of corruption is a serious one. We've seen corruption in many countries, including the UK, where corruption is identified, those culprits need to be punished to the full extent of the law. I'm not arguing that. I am arguing about the process and where the power should lie in terms of how that issue is to be addressed. It's highly inappropriate for the UK to be intervening in, in the affairs on those levels. Are you saying that he will not get a fair trial in the Turks and Caicos, regardless of whether it's a jury trial or trial by judge? My overall assessment of the music case is that the United Kingdom have already framed everything with respect to former Premier Music in a way that is going to guarantee them the outcome they want, i.e. guilty verdicts. I believe that if you really believe in a legitimate, transparent uh, justice system, you would have a trial by jury, if not a, a TCI jury, at the very minimum, a Caribbean jury. So there's a jury of one's peers. That's been the, an important tenet of a, of a strong judiciary. So I believe the system is flawed. I believe that it's going to create challenges. And I think he would be entitled to a very uh, swift appeal. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Walton Brown, and providing some perspective. Thank you very much for the invitation. Happy to uh, have joined you today. That's Walton Brown, a member of parliament in the island of Bermuda, another British overseas territory. The preceding segment was brought to you by Rainforest Seafoods, fresh from the ocean. And you can see more of our exclusive interview with Michael Missick on our website, www.18degreesnorth.tv. So this is where we bring our show to a close for this week. Be sure to join us online, send us your comments on Facebook or on Twitter. We're there to keep all of us connected to the Caribbean. From all of us here at 18 Degrees North, thanks so much for watching. I'm Zara Burton. See you next time. Eighteen Degrees North is a production of Global Reporters for the Caribbean.